This massive hit from 1996 not only have great music, but also have one of the most memorable video clips of the 90s, with a technique not seen in at least many years. This song was the second single from their third studio album, Traveling Without Moving, which is not only their best-selling album, the total estimation of album sold sales are around 11 million copies. This success allows them to hold the Guinness World Records as the best-selling album of funk music. But this is not the only record. They also broke other seven world records. This were from a concert they made on a plane in 2007 for the defunct company Sony Ericsson, and it was called Geek in the Sky. At the date of the creation of this video, they still hold only two of those records, which are fastest concert and highest recording, along with the one previously mentioned. The song was written around 1996. According to the writers, it all started by a visit to the city of Sendai in Japan. The singer walked down the street in the winter season and it was deserted, like a ghost city. He wondered where was everybody. He was told that everyone was in some kind of underground city, that he had to go down there to find them. He went down there and that place was full of people and neon light, as you would expect to find it on the surface. He then thought, so this is what people are going to be like in the future, living in a completely different reality than what is happening on the surface. That is how the reality aspect came into the lyrics, what the reality is and how people would be in the future. The second aspect that influenced the lyrics was a reflection on how people use technology and the long-term effects of those advances in their lives. Even though this statement is still valid today with the internet, smartphones, social media, etc., that hardly existed in 1996. They were talking about a broader aspect of technology, other technologies that are more transparent to us, like those used to create genetically modified organisms, such as the plants or animals we eat. Two cases at that time for sure influenced their concerns about it. The first, an outbreak of mad cow disease, which can be transmitted to humans by eating food made from sick cows and is incurable. It's caused by an error in a protein conformation. One possible cause could be a genetic mutation. And the origin of the epidemic was traced back to the feed given to the cattle. The second was the advances in cloning technology that allowed the birth of cloned animals, the most famous, Dolly the sheep. There were successful results with lambs in 1995 and smaller animals since the 80s, but Dolly caused a media frenzy and of course raised ethical questions. This specific aspect is here in the lyrics when he says that the mother can choose the color of her child. In both cases, the general public was not in control of what was happening and wondered who was in charge of regulating technologies and their effects. The final influence was the fact that the year 2000 was only four years away, and as usual, people and the media got mystical about this date, thinking that something catastrophic or spiritual might happen in the millennium change, and a couple of events didn't help either. The first was the Y2K bug, a failure that prevented computers from displaying the year 2000 and set the day back to 19,000. This could have caused failures in computer controlled systems, such as bank balances disappearing, satellites and missiles going out of control, power stations leaving whole cities without electricity, telecommunication services, and of course, without emergency service calls. Now we know that the problem has been solved, but at the time, the headlines were, the world will be destroyed by computers. The second event was that a supercomputer, the IBM Deep Blue, defeated a human playing chess, Gary Kasparov, who was the world chess champion at that time. Deep Blue was able to evaluate 200 million chess positions per second, setting a milestone for future supercomputers. Again, this raised concerns about how intelligence machines were becoming and how much we depend on them. Does this sound familiar? Traveling without moving, according to Jay, comes from the idea that we as a planet are moving, rotating in space, but we as humans are not moving forward. We're not making this world a better place. Toby and Jay wrote eight songs for this album, which includes other major hits like High Times and All Right. They also wrote the lyrics for the song Deeper Underground, which was part of the 1997 film 
Godzilla. The album was recorded at the Great Linford Manor Park, which, as it sounds, is a mansion that was partially converted into a recording studio, specifically the largest ballroom. It was built toward the end of the 17th century. The mansion is surrounded by nature and is now a tourist attraction in the area. I included this because I was expecting a classic Tech studio. A place like this is the complete opposite of virtual. It's almost therapeutic. According to the sources I checked, you could even stay in the mansion while recording, as it offered accommodation for the artist. The mansion is now rarely used as a studio. However, you can plan a visit to the Great Linford Manor Park to relieve the band's experience there, but you can visit the mansion anymore, because it's a private house now. The video was directed by Jonathan Glazer. I'm sure you've seen some of his works in music videos, commercial or even movies. Let's start with the music videos. Radiohead, Karma Police, Blur, The Universal, Massive Attack, Karma Coma. On the advertising side, major clients include Guinness, this one has great VFX, Stella Artois with the award-winning Devil's Island, and Apple. And finally, in movies, some of his works are Under the Skin with Scarlett Johansson as an alien, Sexy Beast with the great actor Ben Kingsley, watch out because these movies are rated R, and of course, The Zone of Interest, which has already won many awards in the festivals, including the BAFTA, Cannes, and the Oscars. He already has a long list of different awards as a director during his career. He was chosen to direct the Virtual Insanity video, largely due to his work on Radiohead, a Street Spirit video. The initial idea for the video was suggested by Jay. He wanted to be in a moving walkway or travelator, or get the kind of movement that these mechanisms provides, you know, like he was sliding, so he could do his moves that became a trademark. Of course, they can use or afford such a conveyor mechanisms. The estimated cost starts at $20,000, and well, it only moves in one axis. They discuss the idea with the director, and even Jay shows some of the moves he wanted to do in the video. According to the source, this happened on the street while they were in a pub. After this meeting, the director started to develop ideas to solve the problem. The first idea was to create a moving floor with motors to move it in different directions. That idea was discarded because an estimated cost for this solution could reach up to $350,000 to build. The second approach was to use computer graphics, even if they were pretty decent at that time. Compared to movies made 27 years later, it may take too much time and were too expensive to be used in a music video that was mostly reserved for movies. According to the director, one member of the production team suggested, let's not move the floor, let's move everything else. At that time, some people thought that was a stupid idea, and I guess that didn't age well. In the end, the solution was to use a pristine floor and build a structure that looked like a room with three walls, but built in sections that could be swapped out. And the fourth wall is where the camera and filming equipment was attached to the structure. All this was mounted on special wheels that allowed them to move in any horizontal direction. The couches were attached to the structure with bolts, depending if they needed to be still or move with the structure. Once released, the couch stayed still. Ironically, this allowed the viewer to perceive that it was in motion, when in fact, the opposite was the case. The director called Jay at 1 a.m. to tell him all this. At that moment, Jay, who was asleep, didn't understand anything and just agreed. It was filmed around August 1996 in a studio located in Battersea, London. The creative agency was Smoke and Mirrors in the UK. And as usual, like many video clips of that era, it was produced by Propaganda Films. It took about 15 people to move the entire structure. The movement generated a quite loud noise. Add to that the screams of the director indicating where the structure needed to be moved while you were trying to perform. The whole design of the set was inspired by the famous Row House by Tadao Ando, and I think that is clearly visible. I included this section just because, again, I wasn't expecting this backstory. The design of this house was created based on a strange request. Have a rich and minimalist interior space that is somehow connected to the outside environment while isolating the big city exterior, which is why it has no windows. 
The house is basically a two-story rectangular box with a reinforced concrete exterior. This isolated the house from the noise of the working-class neighborhood. The open ceilings allowed all the elements inside the isolated house, the sun, the wind, and even the rain, in a house characterized by its sobriety. The architect is almost as peculiar as his works. He is a self-taught architect who works as a boxer and even as a truck driver. He has received many international awards during his successful professional career. The rumors of the backstory says that the owner of the house had to move to Osaka, a city in which he didn't want to live. That's why he only wanted a house that isolated him from the city while allowing him to be in contact with the elements. On the other hand, the architect, at that time, considered the exterior a hostile environment. I don't know if it was because of the shadows of the World War II. I wasn't able to confirm exactly what motivated the creative team to select that house as an inspiration for the design of the set. There were a few scenes that Jay said were difficult. This one at 158, even though Jay had an idea of the choreography, he admitted that this scene almost got him in trouble because he didn't expect the wall to move back and had to improvise quickly. The other was the blood scene because there was no room for error. It just happened. If someone gets picky, probably the only scene that had to stay and gave away some of the illusion was the one with the narrow hallway. If you look closely, you can see the walls move a little bit. But at that time, we weren't yet sure what was moving if it was the floor or the walls. So the mystery remained. By the way, the guys you see there were actual members of the band, at least in the 1996 formation. Even though it was all done with practical effects, it still required a little bit of post-production to remove the marks on the floor that could ruin the illusion. That was something that could be done back then, even if it was expensive. But also remember that the resolution of the TV at that time was equivalent to 640 by 480, something like this size today. According to the official documentary, there is a continuity error because Jay chose a lighter blue fleece for the final scene. For me, it was hard to see because the fleece changes color during the whole video, but it's easier when you see it side by side. This take could not be reshot because the blood was all over the floor and pouring out of the walls, ruining everything. So the mistake had to stay in the final cut. At one point, the director tried to guide or suggest J movements for the video. But he replied that he has been doing these movements and dances since he was four years old in his bedroom. The director got the message and just let him improvise. The song was nominated in different award ceremonies. Some of them were iHeartRadio Much Music Video Awards, Breed Awards, and MTV Video Music Awards of 1997, where they won Best Cinematography, Best Visual Effects, Breakthrough Video, and Video of the Year. They won Best Album in the Movo Awards. And I include this because the ceremony honors achievements made by the music of Black Origin so their jazz and funk was good enough to be recognized by this organization. There are four aspects of the video that are open to interpretation. First, the cockroach can have two meanings according to what I found. One is that these insects are often perceived as a symbol of resilience because they have solid survival skills and adaptability to any scenario. In the music video, it could represent how people carry on even when things get tough. The other one I found is that it refers to Kafka novel Metamorphosis, which is about a man who wakes up and finds himself transformed into an insect. This could be a reference to what I mentioned about the long-term effects of food technology in our bodies. Number two, the top hat. This is the weakest one because Jay always use some kind of hat. We can easily verify this by watching previews and even new videos to know that at this point is almost a trademark. However, if there is a reference, the Mad Hatter from Alice Adventures in Wonderland is probably the one that fits the style, but also the story, because we all know that's the character known for his insane behavior. The blood. The meaning could have two interpretations. The first, a metaphor of discomfort, suffering, or conflict in society. 
Also, the presence of blood definitely creates a contrast with the white dominant color of the video. The second one I found was probably a loose reference to the movie The Shining. You know, that scene in the elevator. In a movie where the protagonist ends up going crazy. If you haven't seen the movie, at least you probably have seen the meme. The blackbird. Not just any bird. It's just a raven or crowd. And the most famous I can think of is the one from the poem The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe, in which the protagonist, perhaps delusional, is confronted by a talking raven. I found that Jay is in the same boat as all of us. He admitted in an interview on October 2022 that, and I quote, I never quite understood the crowd. What the fuck is the crowd doing here? He also admitted that he doesn't understand the blood. So, the only one who can give us the answer is the director or the creative team. But I tried to contact some of them, and I never got response. The cultural influence of the video is present in various other audiovisual works and parodies. We can see some of the classics, but let's take a look at some others. In advertising, one of the most famous is this one for a drink in Spain, where they use almost the same technique more than 16 years later. In fashion, in this case with the official collaboration between the singer and the designers of Comme des Garçons. In toy figures, like this one from Bandai, with a fantastic stop-motion commercial featuring the official figure from the video. There are even video games. I don't recommend any of them. Use them at your own risk. The first one is just fun and weird. In the game, you have to move while avoiding the sofas. And there's even a VR version. The second game is a kind of sandbox metaverse where you can create or control JK. This one is by Animoca. Of course, the further down we go, the stranger things we find. Like an AI version or the bathroom version. The kind of videos that just can't be explained. Like this parody from a Japanese show called Our Yoshi's Wall that you have to take a look for yourself. But back to the music, the most relevant might be Austin Mahon with the song Mm Yeah featuring Pitbull, the Mr. Worldwide. Also, the Spanish artist Rosalia used the same technique in a live social media performance. Finally, I chose this one because it looked really artistic with the use of rotoscope animation. Pretty awesome. I hope you enjoyed the video. It was a long process to get it done. If you know someone who might like this video, please share it. I'm looking to grow the channel a little bit, so your like helps to promote this video. If you have anything interesting to add or any other weird theory, you can write it on the comments. I'm Rash, and I'll see you on another Remental video.